Hello everyone, Sableye here and welcome back to the channel. This past weekend there were a bunch of online competition and today we're going to kind of analyze them, see what was going on there, especially ahead of some of the up and coming regionals. It's a good idea to do this every once in a while, see what's going on, see where the meta is headed. I say we're going to jump right into things and guys there is no way we can start this off without looking at the victory road results and staring at Joe's team there and going, that is indeed a jump bluff, yes. Yes, it is indeed a jump bluff. Now, the Fluttermane, the King Gambit, the Great Tusk, the Torkoal, that's just a good core, right? That core won Vancouver Regionals and now has been updated with jump bluff over Lilligant and they added on a Shen Pao, basically, I guess to get with the times. I mean, there's obviously other reasons, right? But like... Generally speaking, getting with the times with the Shen Pao there, and honestly, guys, we got to talk about the jump bluff, right? Why, like, why jump bluff over Lilligant? And you know that, honestly, Joe's exact reasoning, I probably couldn't tell you. I, I would probably get it wrong if I tried to guess. However, jump bluff, in my opinion, does have that extra natural speed, which is really, really nice. It also gets some cool things, to, like aid in like a Dondozo matchup, where you get potentially like strength sap to knock down its attack and heal up your HP, right? And you can use that into other things as well, right? Like. You can use that into something like a Great Tusk. You can use that into some of the offensive mons in the format, right? Like you can weaken down an Arcanine. You know, it's just a cool way to weaken things and at the same time heal yourself, right? So it does get some cool moves. Obviously, you get Sleep Powder, but you also get Rage Powder, which Lilligant doesn't get. So now you're protecting the rest of the team and supporting the rest of the team with potential fast Sleep Powders and stuff like that. So I think Jump Bluff, Jump Bluff is a really, 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 really cool piece. Excuse my uh, English there. And... Uh, you know, I think Joe uh, found a niche for it, and uh, honestly, I think he made it work really well if he's winning an entire Victory Road tournament, so... Uh, anyways, we're gonna keep going down the list here. Uh, Murkrow seemingly still around, guys. Murkrow ain't going anywhere. It's it's still here. Uh, I don't know too much about Alberto's team here, but obviously, probably got that Tailwind. And then, the, I, the Iron Bundle and the Goldengo is something else on this team that I really wanted to point out. I think we're gonna see a lot more of Iron Bundle Goldengo as the meta develops. Just because it's a decent way to deal with Palins, right? That Palafin Balance Core that you're still going to be seeing here, right? You have it in the ninth place team. You have you have it in the fourth place team, or at least after Swiss, right? You have it over here. Uh, hey, look, more Palins. Uh, where is it? There's more Palins too. I know that. I know that for sure. There's three of the, uh, two of the four, right? There's three of the four. No Fluttermane on that one because they opted for the Annihilate as their Ghost type, but still a common Palins, you know. Same down here, you got more Palance, and it's just, that's going to be the core to beat moving forward, right? That Palafin, Arcanine, Amoongus, Fluttermane, that is going to be the core that everybody's looking to break moving forward, because it's such a good core. Is there one true way to break it? Who knows? But I do think Goldengo, being able to one-shot Fluttermane, being bulky enough to kind of, uh, to kind of sit in front of these uh, Palafins and not just go down immediately. Not being affected by Amoongus I think is a massive one, right? Because now you can kind of pivot it in, not get put to sleep, and kind of either set up a nasty plot, or what I assume on Alberto's team is probably either Choice Specs or Life Orb, but just doing massive damage beside Tailwind, or even after an Icy Wind, right? Just stacking up that damage. And being immune to Amoongus is huge, because you can sit on the, sit on the field, right? These Palance-based teams use this Amoongus to position. And the moment they can't use this Amoongus to, you know, put the Goldengo to sleep or spore something, right? They're starting, they're being on the back foot. Like, Amoongus is completely useless into that Goldengo. Obviously, it's not like a foolproof counter, right? Because, like, Wave Crash still go through it. A lot of these teams do have something like the Ting Lu, as Antonio's team does down here in 13th place. But, overall, like, and generally speaking, Goldengo and Iron Bundle are very good ways to break this Palance core, right? And then you have Adrian's team here, which I do want to point out in Dondozo. Guys, Dondozo isn't going anywhere, right? And I think what Dondozo has in this format is the element of the fact that it's not being used as much. Because before when it was good, it was just straight up good, right? And no matter, even if you had counters to it, Dondozo could still outplay. Now, obviously that still, in a sense, is correct. But I think it's one of those more, it gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of usage and a lot of popularity based now off of no one's expecting it as much, right? Like, I'm now prepping for, I'm prepping for the Palance. I'm prepping for what I think is going to break Palance. In this case, maybe Gold Dengo, right? I'm prepping for that Chiyu, the Gyarados, the Chiyu Fluttermane, the Shampao Dragonite. Dondozo is nowhere not up there on my priority list anymore, right? So I think you definitely have that surprise factor as well. Like, you could have almost seen this team in Series 1. 
Like, you legitimately could have almost seen this team in Series 1. And that's just one of those ones that's... I think this is just Don Dozo compared... Uh, addition with Adrian just being a really good player, finding him, finding it and playing it well, right? Like, just Don Dozo snuck through, guys. It's like, you don't see another one up here. Like, you're still going to see it. It's still around. I'm not saying don't prep for Dozo, but I do think it gets a nice little boost that there are less people like fully preparing for dozo right some people are just like oh i have an iron bundle of movies I, i'm good for it but then you find ways to break through that all of a sudden you're losing to don dozo right it's just like there's a lot less people with like dedicated lines into don dozo now this is what i'm trying to get at like i said then it's just a bunch of palettes going down the list here nothing too crazy a lot of shen pao that i've noticed lingering around especially on sort of so to speak balance cores which is something interesting and it gives balance that extra punch right Imagine sitting on the field, you're the Palafin in front of you, right? You have all your calcs for Palafin. It's like, oh, I'll live this wave crash. And then they just swap in Shen Pao. Next thing you know, you're not living that wave crash, right? It gives balance that extra element. And I think that's why you're starting to see it appear more often on these balance cores. Just because once again, like I said, it's that extra punch. Balance is a very position-based board. And if you have an opportunity to get into a position based game and then all of a sudden do that extra little bit of damage to maybe mess with someone else's calc, take a key knockout when they don't expect you to take a key knockout. It's it's a really nice addition to the team, I think. So I do think Chen Pao addition to this Palance core is something you're going to start seeing moving forward. But uh, moving on, you see more balance. Uh, to you sneaking its way in. Nothing too crazy there for Marco. Just I do like I, I honestly bundled to you does do a lot of good stuff to Palance as well because you're forcing them to make reads, right? Like you want, like in front of this, as a Palance player myself, it's like, I want to be bringing Flutter to this, right? But if I force Flutter into this, now all of a sudden I potentially have a Flutter main, sorry, not a Flutter, but I have a uh, Palafin in front of this. I also want Flutter main because Flutter main is one of my best answers to Iron Bundle, right? So now all of a sudden I have a Flutter main on the field that's just going to go down to something like that King Gambit or I have my Flutter main on the field that's just not going to really be able to do anything to Iron Bundle and then you can capitalize on that because I'm going to have to be positioning around and stuff like that. That that Marco's team is really cool and I think it does implements that well, right? It's pretty standard, right? There's nothing too crazy going on there, right? Just you get your speed control with Talonflame, you've got your your uh, you've got your Flutter main, you've got your TU, you've got your Iron Bundle. Pretty offensive, especially with the Great Tusk. But I do think it's a solid team overall. Uh, save over here with uh, David A. Uh, that might actually be the same six as Marco. It is indeed the same six as Marco. So similar concept. Uh, something else I do want to point out, and probably the last thing I'm going to point out here. A couple Corviknights, guys. And in case you haven't noticed, some of the a lot of these teams they're finding ways to hit these Flutter mains and to get these Flutter mains off the field as soon as possible right earlier in the format it was that heavy slam from ting lu that was doing it now people are like oh wait a second that's probably not enough anymore right so we've seen king gambit a few times we've seen gold dangos and now we're seeing corviknights over on this side of the uh over on the other side of the board here and there's a couple of them here in top 16 there's a couple in tour turn uh in the other tournaments we're going to look at briefly as well but the tailwind support for your team just allowing the rest of your team to go fast really really helpful because like having that speed control especially on a bulky pokemon like corviknight you know it's like talonflame like talonflame is going to get the tailwind up and nine times out of ten it's going to be dead either the tur that turn or the turn after right whereas corviknight is going to get that tailwind up and then it's going to potentially linger on the field right it's going to have access to something like roost it's going to have access to the bulk ups you know you could take leftovers on it. you could go rocky helm you could go goggles right and that versatility and just Excuse me, and just naturally reversing, and, and not not reversing, sorry, but resisting that Fluttermane Moonblast, right? That's the big damage dealer from Fluttermane, right? And then you just one-shot it back with an Iron Head, or if you wanted to drop Iron Head and get to like plus one and try to one-shot it with a plus one Brave Bird, you can do that too. I do think Iron Head is a little bit better in this format just because Fluttermane is literally everywhere. But then again, you can still run Brave Bird. I do think it's cool. It's very tough to work into teams with the TUs being around, but honestly, if you can deal with TU, like, look at Andrew here. Andrew's got the uh, the Corviknight and the Tinglu. Tinglu is going to be able to deal with TU pretty consistently for the most part, right? You've also got the Iron Bundle to potentially do big damage to it. I think that's a really cool team, right? And I I I, I love seeing Corviknight. You know I'm you know I'm going to talk about Corviknight, <laughs> right? If you guys aren't if you guys are familiar with the channel, you know I'm going to be talking about Corviknight. I love that bird, but uh, right, that's going to pretty much wrap up our coverage of VR here. Or Victory Road. And we're going to move over to uh, Nino uh, Poker Bros' tournament from the weekend as well. Hey, look what won. It's a Corviknight. I'm just saying, 
I don't want I don't want to say anything, but there is a Corviknight, and there is a Corviknight and a Goldengo actually. So this is a very interesting uh, variant, and I like it because it's bulky, bulky Terra Water Goldengo besides Screen, right? And you get Screens, and you're just gonna farm balance with this because you go Terra Water, they're not breaking through Terra Water Goldengo and Screens, right? Goldengo is gonna set up in front of that too well. Uh, the only concern with that would be something like the Ting Wu on that variant of the team. Like on the standard balance six, it would be Ting Lu. And you've got stuff like Corviknight, which Ting Lu does not want to see. You've got stuff like Spirit Break on Grimmsnarl, which is still going to hurt Ting Lu. It's not a big problem, but Annihilate's the big one there, right? As long as there's no Fissure, or you can just dodge Fissures. You can just, you know, Drain Punch, bulk up in front of it. It's not taking you down. And, right, they have the answers to that Ting Lu. And honestly, Goldengo behind screens is, once again, just those Steel types turning into Water types, right? And just a water type that can't be affected by Amoongus sits in front of Palance. And if you can play it well, you're gonna find you're gonna have opportunities to win games with water types that can't be touched by Amoongus. Even just Goldengo itself, right? Because you're one-shotting to Fluttermane, right? It's like sometimes the water type is decent, it doesn't get affected by Amoongus, but it just goes down to Fluttermane, right? But here you're gonna live a Fluttermane attack and you're just gonna one-shot it back with a make it rain. So I think that's where the Goldengo advantage comes in. Uh, Michael's team is a little bit hyper, uh, a little bit more offensive here. I like seeing the T tower, honestly. I think if Sun becomes popular, uh, more popular now, especially with Joe winning VR, I don't hate seeing T tower. T tower is still a good Pokemon uh, that kind of everybody seems to have kind of put on the back burner here, but we do see it here get second place, which is really really cool to see. Uh, obviously, in tag team with that champ power, double ice is interesting. Not really something I was expecting to see, but definitely cool to see. Uh, some more balancey stuff here with uh, Donald's team. Obviously, double ghost though, so they don't have the Palafin, but instead they opted for the Iron Bundle as their water type. But honestly, once again, it's the Fire Water Grass Core plus Fluttermane, right? It's not Palance, but it's really good balance. You know, same moving on down here. You've got the Intimidate. Uh, opt to drop the Fire type here from Tehran's team, but still that balancey core, right? And it's these balance cores that you're gonna have to find a way to break, right? Hey, look, more sun. More Sun. This one is the Lilligant variant that we've seen rolling around since uh, Vancouver, or just before Vancouver. I guess really since when Nails popularized it a while back. But, right, just more Sun. Uh, some balance here. Interesting take on it as well with like the Shen Pao. Like it's a very aggressive form, right? I don't think it's like super balancey. It's I, I would call this like aggressive balance, you know? In my opinion. Uh, Orthworm, really, really cool. I think Orthworm is something that's being slept on right now. I, I hate to say this, I, something I never thought I'd say is that, hey, Orthworm might be good. <laughs> Orthworm might be good, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Iron Defense Body Press is just generally good. You only really have a weakness to, gr uh, to ground and fire stuff, right? You can tear out of the fire weakness and you're still immune to ground because of Earth Eater. So, you know, you get stuff like Shed Tail. I wouldn't be surprised if this was something like Shed Tail into Multi-Scale Dragonite to kind of set up like a Dragon Dance. In fact, let's uh, let's check that out. I'm actually curious now. Uh, Multi-scale Dragon Dance Dragonite. There it is. All right. See? Look at that. Right? And that's just something. That's a really cool tech. I like that, right? Because then you got your multi-scale actually aiding in the ability of that first hit on that substitute. So you're basically getting a free Dragon Dance up if you can get into that position, right? And that is super scary, especially when Shen Pao comes in beside the Dragonite later. Now you've got a plus one Dragonite. Doing massive damage. Orthworm comes back in. You click EQ with the Dragonite. Heal yourself up. Still doing big damage to your opponent. Right? So, I think Orthworm's good. Definitely cool to see there. This was a massive tournament, by the way, guys. You can see just how long Top Cut is. Up down to 26, right? So, all X2 Cut here. Um, once again, another Corviknight. A little bit more aggressive of a Corviknight team. But once again, they still have that core balance with the Palafin, the Fluttermane, the Arcanine. Right? More balance. Garganical is interesting. Something we haven't seen in a while, but I do like this concept of Garg. There are a lot of opportunities for Garg to sneak into things. I think if you can like tear a ghost Garg and keep it alive long enough, it can beat Balance pretty well. Especially since Palance likes to switch around. You know, that Palafin's Balance team. It likes switching in, switching out, right? Getting that positioning. All of a sudden, you start just dropping Salt Cures every turn. All those switch-ins are going to just eventually add up over damage, and you're going to be able to finish things off late game with like an Iron Bundle or a Fluttermane, right? Just stuff like that. Hey, another Dozo sneaking in. Not going to talk too much about the Dozo teams, guys. But uh, they're there, right? There's one up here. There's one down here. They're, they're around. They're around. They're still there. 
They're, they're just not quite as common as often. Ditto is insane. Ditto is not something you see, generally speaking, outside of those restricted formats with the legendaries, right? Because having a third legendary is massive. So seeing it on a team like this is really interesting, especially in something like this format. Now, hey, maybe you get a second Shen Pao. Maybe you steal your opponent's Fluttermane, right? The more the merrier, right? I guess the, if you have a second Fluttermane, it's good. <laughs> sure. I don't know. It's kind of cool concept, something to consider. Uh, more balancey stuff. Hey, Goldengo's coming back up. Goldengo screens. Interesting. Uh, what else are we here? Um, those are once again I talked about. Mouse Ape. Mouse Ape plus uh, Goldengo. This is similar to the Paul Ruiz team. I don't know if it is the Paul Ruiz team or not, but it's definitely similar to it. Uh, very cool concept of a team. Definitely like seeing Annihilate and uh, Mouse Hold. I, I do think it's one of those uh, teams that just forces your opponent to make reads. And if they don't have the answers to those reads, your reads on your end are super, super safe. And you can just steamroll with the Flutter, uh, with the Mouse Ape, or you can just drop that and just go with like the Goldengo Iron Bundle mode. A lot of cool modes on this team. I think it's a really cool team. Uh, some more balance stuff. Kiyu's making an appearance on balance here. Uh, Palafin and Gyarados is interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but it's, it's there. I feel like Palafin's the odd one out here. Like, I would drop the Palafin in this scenario and just personally myself, but maybe this is something. Maybe they've got something here, right? Like, then you've got San, once again, Titar, sneaking its way in. And weather, I don't think, is going to be bad. Uh, Stone Junior Braviary. I, I didn't see that when I was initially going through this. That's kind of wild. Um, yeah, Stone Junior Braviary. That's all we're going to say. We're going to wrap up the Nino Tour coverage now. Uh, <laughs> all right, Stone Junior Braviary, yo, honestly, super, super cool to see. Guys, look, two more Corviknights. Two more Corviknights. I, I don't know. I like seeing Corvin. I do think it's a cool meta call right now. Right, I already kind of touched upon it. More sand, something to consider. Something to consider is weather becoming a thing again, right? Like we were straying away from weather, but weather has this cool thing, especially when you pair it with like a weather abuser. So whether it's sand rush, uh, slush rush, uh, swift swim, right? Or uh, what's the, or chlorophyll, right? Just stuff like that allows you to make plays and it gives you positions to make plays that your opponent can't necessarily make right like with balance if i want a speed boost i have to set tailwind or i have to slow them down with an icy wind right but on a team with like a weather abuser like that if you want to set like set something up like get faster you can always just switch in your weather right and that gives that extra layer to a team and that's a lot of the times when formats first start i like playing sand because it gives me that extra element Right, it gives me that pressure just to switch something in and then all of a sudden go fast and do damage before you're expecting me to do damage, right? And I have to respect that. Like if they were to lead like like in Rock to you, I have to respect that there could be a T tar in the back, right? It gives you that extra layer, and I think that's something to consider. Okay, Gastron guys. I'm gonna be honest. Everybody's like, ooh, is Gastron good? I don't think Gastron has ever been necessarily a good Pokemon in this format. In like regulation C but I do think it does a very interesting job versus balance right the only problem with it once again is Fluttermane still doing 50% and you're still getting put to sleep and redirected by Amoongus so obviously you can tear a fire out of the Fluttermane Moonblast weakness but you're still getting hit by Shadow Ball stuff not the easiest thing to do not the easiest thing to pilot but it is a cool concept it did get second so maybe it is good maybe I'm just trash talking it for no reason a little bit lower is Seraledge. I am going to point the Seraledge out. I don't mind seeing that. Just another couple dozos here, guys. Just making making sure they have an appearance, you know? Just making sure there's some uh, some done dozos uh, in cut here and there, you know? Just making sure they're on the field. But uh, Volcarona is a cool one. I've always wanted to make Volcarona work in this format. I, I just haven't been able to. So maybe Cody here figured it out. But like in theory, you get a Quiver Dance up. Fluttermane is not touching you. But you're just so weak to like Palafin. And all those physical attackers in the format that it's really really difficult to get up but if you can get it set up you're in a pretty good spot with it i believe rotom is interesting down here like once again another gold dengo not going to go too much farther than top 16 but we do see a screamtail sneak in something to consider as well i wonder if that's like howl screamtail next to like dragonite it is howl screamtail next to dragonite oh my 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 calls are on point today guys my calls are on point we're gonna switch over here to uh the next tournament here hey look at that balance clean clean sweep balance Couple Dondozos though, second and third. Absolutely crazy. So Dondozo sneaking its way in. Sneaking its way in again, once again, right? But like, and that's it. And then you don't really see him. There's one in 12th here. But 
Other than that, you don't see too much, right? It's a lot of Dozo Hey Look more balanced stuff, more balanced stuff. This is the Gyarados TU version of the, the common balance. Still a really good team. Mouse Ape sneaking in as well is kind of cute. Uh, once again, you don't see a lot of Mouse Ape, but once again, it is, like I said before, still a good core if you can force your opponents to make reads that they don't want to have to make. Uh, Breloom is interesting. I don't really know what Breloom does. It could be like Sash stuff, Sash 4, Loaded Dice Bullet Seed could be cool as well. Uh, cool team. I think it's cool. Like, I don't see, you don't see a lot of Breloom's, right? So, pretty cool to see. Then you've got more balanced stuff here. Just literally pretty much the standard 6 on balance. Uh, nothing too crazy going on over here either, right? Just some more balanced stuff, some more balanced stuff, all right? And guys, all this, these results, what these results tell me is balance is the thing to beat. And if you look at what's, at what's done well, it's everything that is either balanced or what has a potentially a decent matchup into balance, right? Like balance won this tournament, cool. This tournament over here, let's go back over here, right? Balance wins the tournament right some other things are, are up here on this list are stuff that's going to do well in the balance right a different bit a little bit of a different balance mode right a corvanite a corvanite right doing well in the balance right the iron bundle tu puts pressure on balance making them make reads they don't want to make taking big damage while they're taking switches puts pressure on the balance right and even if you go back to the nino tour which is a bit of a little bit of a larger tour right corvanite goldengo these are two massive balance breakers in the format right now and it won the tournament for a reason, right? If you show up prepared for balance, if you show up prepared for balance and some of the things that are going to break balance, obviously you have to be ready for like some of the hyper offense stuff as well. Like I'm not saying don't like ignore it, but if you can be ready for balance, right? And that's the secret here, being ready for balance and finding ways to break it. Because realistically, that's what the King Gambit's been around for, right? Like you see a bunch of balance up here, which is still a good core. Because there really isn't a bad matchup for balance. Like, there's some favor unfavorable ones, but the thing with balance and why it's called balance and why it's so good is because there's very few, if any, like, completely unwinnable matchups, right? And that's why you see it at the top tables all so often, right? Especially in this format, because that Palafin Arcanine Amoongus Fluttermane Core is just absolutely disgusting. Disgustingly difficult to break, right? So, being ready for balance and finding ways to have favorable matchups in the balance is seemingly the takeaway here, right? Like, even in Victory Road, right? Like, Joe's team is not standard, right? But he has some really good Pokemon and has ways to deal with balance, right? Like, the King Gambit putting damage onto the Fluttermane. The Shen Pao dealing with potentially the Amoongus. Fluttermane on his hand doing this massive damage, right? Great Tusk in the Sun, by the way, is also a very interesting take. Because Palance likes to just, you know, jet punch the ground types. I can't jet punch a Great Tusk if it's in the sun. I'm doing less than 50%, right? Now, all of a sudden, I'm doing less than 50%, and it's just sitting there in the sun, probably with an attack boost from the Protosynthesis, spamming Earthquakes. And it's that's it's just good. It, it's just good. There's no other way to put it, guys. Really cool team from Joe. I think this is where we wrap it up. Once again, super happy to see Jump Bluff. Hopefully, this wasn't just me rambling for, tw uh, for 20 or so minutes. Uh, we actually get some takeaways out of this. Right, but once again, balance still reigning supreme. Some steel types, for my, in my opinion, primarily just putting down pressure onto Fluttermane is something super, super important because you can pivot around other things, right? If you just one-shot Fluttermane, you can start pivoting and winning things, right? So that's a way to take it. That's why I think these steel types like Corviknight and Goldengo are starting to appear. Just because you're putting pressure onto that Fluttermane, it no longer wants to be on the field or it can't stay on the field even if it does come for that as long as it really wants to be there, right? So putting pressure onto things like that and then once again, all in all, guys, just jump bluff. Jump bluff was cool. That's the that's the that's the point of the video. But uh, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'm gonna stop rambling now. If you guys do enjoy the content, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I will catch you all in a future video.